Hey everybody, welcome to the very first episode of Shot Ones, the show where we blatantly rip off hot ones. <laughs> if you've seen that show, awesome. If you don't know what that show's about, let me give you a quick rundown. So, we're going to be answering a series of questions, and as the booze gets intense, more intense, uh, so will the caliber of the questions. And today, I've got my very first guest. I'm really, really excited. This is Corey uh, from Black Tie Dynasty. And uh, yeah, we're going to get to know each other today. We're going to have a little fun. We're going to drink some booze. Okay. And booze is, uh, is cool, but not as cool as you. Aww. Thank you, my man. Appreciate it. Good to be here. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. Awesome. So obviously, the first, like I was saying, the shots increase in intensity. Uh, we're starting off with a Miller Lite uh, from Texas. Uh, which is where we are as well. And then it moves to um, soju, which is a Korean rice wine, delicious, refreshing. You have to pour everyone else's shot. That's just the rules. That's how it goes. Okay. Then we're moving on to Jägermeister, the delicious uh, farmhouse uh, beverage from Germany. And then Chi Town Classic with Malort. And Malort, I heard bad things about this. Mm. Uh, then we're moving on to Everclear. We'll see how clear things are after that. And then finally, we have a nasty, super spicy Bloody Mary made with the Widowmaker. A hot one, hot sauce actually. So uh, yeah, it's gonna get pretty gnarly in here. Woo. All right, so here we go. Very first shot. First shot ones. Are you ready to make some history? I'm ready to make history. Let's Woo! do this. All right. We got some Miller Lite here, ladies and gents. Cheers. Down I guess the hatch. it's a shot. Cheers. Anything can be a shot. <laughs> That's right. All right. So you guys have had a, a long career in DFW. Mm -hmm. You're actually from Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what was it like seeing the music scene develop locally? What's your favorite component of that? Um, so I think the, my favorite component of the, the scene is, um, is the collaboration between artists. Like, I think that's something that I'm, um, I'm a big fan of just, um, collaborating and connecting with, with people Like just, that's my personality, um, and learning about different cultures and, and music is a part of that. And so I think, um, you know, being able to like explore that as an artist and, and appreciate it and, and work with other artists that I also admire. Um, that's been something that I've, I've had an opportunity to do with Black Tie and want to continue to do that um, with you guys, you know, and um, with with uh, other bands that are that are currently working on music. And uh, that's what, I, that's really energizing to me. But let me ask you this, what do you think is the future of music in the Metroplex? Well, the future of music in the Metroplex is, um, I think I, I think it's a, just a high degree of um, not only collaboration, but also of um, I think with that collaboration comes a little bit of a competitive spirit that just causes all of the art to rise to the top. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think uh, the more that there is uh, like partnerships and alliances uh, and collaboration throughout the scene, I think that's just going to bring out the best in in music because everyone's going to be. Um, obviously supporting one another but also wanting to kind of like one up okay we did this like let's you know like oh, how yeah. can we you know how can we take a, like a little bit of that flavor and like a little and, healthy and competition yeah i think that's good i mean yeah. that's that, that's yeah. fun yeah it is it is it keeps keeps things turning keeps the mm -hmm. scene moving forward and i love that too all right number two here we go number Are two soju okay right. have you ever had this before i have not i'm excited to try here it for a treat let's do this That's really good. It's really refreshing. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've got some questions for you if that's all right. Okay. Let's so do it. We're gonna flip the script here, right? Woo! So my question for you is: When you think about all the kids out there watching this program um, that are doing music, that are inspired by music, just like both of us are, um, what advice would you give? other artists that are coming up in the scene or that just want to be a part of it that are maybe on the outside looking in um what would you what would advice what have you learned what would you tell them my biggest piece of advice i would say is be genuine yeah. write about the things that you know write about things that mean something to you um you know one of the most beautiful things in the world in my life that i've 
I'm a very uh, environmentally minded person. And, um, you know, when you, when you write about things that actually mean something to you and you're singing about it, um, and then you look out into the crowd and you see people singing back mm -hmm. and you see people on Instagram changing the things that they do because they heard you talking about something in a song, whether it's sharks going extinct after mm -hmm. 360 million years or, um, you know, how there's a, a floating eighth continent of trash out in the middle of the uh, Pacific Ocean because people aren't taking care of plastic in the right mm -hmm. way. It's really cool to sort of intimate that message to people mm -hmm. because um, they actually take it to heart. Yeah. And then they actually start to believe in the things that mean something to you. Yeah. So my advice is if you've never been in love, don't write a love song. Yeah. Unless you're writing about how you don't know how to love somebody. Yeah. You right. Know, write about <laughs> something that actually makes sense. Yeah. Because art's hard. Yeah. And it's even harder if you're trying to guess what certain things are. Totally. So write about right, what things. you know. Yeah. Write yeah. about what's here. Yeah. And then everything else will come fall into place. Yeah. You know, with sharks, I also um, find that it's so unfair that um, that we say shark infested waters <laughs> yeah. because that's just not fair. It's uh, not, that, man. Like, are these people infested neighborhoods? I feel like it's a human infested <laughs> beach, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. We're moving on up the chain. Shot oh my god, three. I'm, I'm actually most afraid of this one. <laughs> so. I haven't had one of these for like 15 years. Totally, man. Here this we is go. Great. This right. is great. Chin chin. This is what we do for showbiz. Woo! Uh, woo! You know, it's not as bad as I remember it. I feel like uh, when you, it's it's when you stack them up. When you have it's like when you stack up. them up. You get that Jaeger blackout. Whew. Yeah. You just don't even know what's I going on. I mean, I'm on. not going to sip that on ice, but like, no. yeah, I, I think it's starting to make sense to me. So we did the deepest of dives on your socials. Okay. Okay. So uh, now amongst all the fun, behind the scenes posts, cantaloupe vids, there's a photo of this really cool um, imagination inspired synth machine. Mm -hmm. And I've got it right here. So it was used in the much scarier music video. Yes. Who created this? Does this thing actually work? work. Does it play? <laughs> Does it work? Are you using it now? <laughs> Can I have it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, who comes up with these ideas? Yeah, so for, uh, for those that don't know, um, you haven't met Brian yet, um, but Brian, uh, our uh, synth uh, keyboard player, he built this um, for the video. And you kind of have to know Brian in order to really fully appreciate the impetus for this because he is, uh, he is a genius. Uh, he thinks things, he conceptualizes things in the way, this is like his brain, like cool. his brain in an instrument. Um, he wanted, we, I said, you know, what if we made this, like this machine where we had these different, I mean, uh, we have these different elements that we're um, using to like make the machine work. But uh, but yeah, that this is like his you know creation and um, and it in to if you go back into our um, feed, you can see like the sense that he's like um, built and um, yeah, he's he's sort of a mastermind. For our next shot. And then I'm going to ask you a question. Oh yeah. Um, it looks like we're about to move our way on to the Malort. And I also want to give a we're shout out. Do it. <laughs> I also want to give a shout out to my friend uh, Jill. Um, what's up, Jill? Um, so Jill was able to ship this Malort um, from uh, one of her relatives. Uh, they shipped it over to us in like a day. Like so. Jill, thank you so much. Because you can't find this stuff anywhere. You're a hero, Jill. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am ready. I don't know much about Malort, but I read a review that said it tastes like uh, pencil shavings and gasoline. Dude, well, let's, let's try it. All right. Malort, I will. Woo! What does that taste like? 
There's something very familiar about that taste. I mean, um, I mean it's foul. I'll, I'll it's say that foul it's foul smelling. But there's something. It does taste. I do see. It. I don't know what. It there is. is like a little bit of a gasoline or something that's not healthy. Maybe so that's what there's it is. Something I'm that's like a gas station. Maybe I'm tasting it at a gas station. Um, and it really does uh, stay on the palate. Yeah, uh, it's, for a while. It's like, moving in for at least another month or two. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Here All right. we are, man. Yeah, I need something Woo! to wash that down. Mm. This is straight vodka, in case anyone's wondering. Yeah, we're hardcore. We are yeah, hardcore. That's how we do. Um, okay. So, um, I was kind of scoping through your um, Instagram feed, and uh, um, there's... There's quite a bit of, um, there's a lot of puppets. They're like, there's a video with puppets. So this is sort of a, uh, like this sort of a, 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 a launching pad for my question, but like, um, I'm all, I, I grew up watching the Muppets uh, and like big fan. My, my buddy, he actually worked for Sesame Street for a little while. Wow, he built cool. like some puppets uh, and things like that. But um, what, um, what puppet um, would you want to have dinner with? Oh, man. Same okay, thing. okay. Dinner, like... Yeah. The one that I think I would have a great time with and just, like, <laughs> have a lot of fun... Okay, there's two. Okay, there's two. Um, animal is number one. Okay. Like, because the guy's just like... Ugh, ugh, yeah. Ugh, ugh. He's, like, you know, drumming all the time. He's going crazy. Yeah. He's got, like, furry red hair. I mean, he's awesome. He's got some stories. He's got some... Dude, he's, he's got some grunts is what yeah. that guy's got. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I uh, I love Animal. I think he's great. He's mm. just, like, a, he's just like the primordial man. Yeah. In puppet form. And I think he's great. He plays the drums. You know, yeah. like, how caveman. Like, I love it. Yeah. Um, also, the Count, I think, yeah. would be fun. Because he'd be, like... One, two, three, yeah. four. <laughs> like counting the shots as we do them, you know. It'd be yeah. Kind of fun. It might well, get a little good. Maybe it hold you accountable, like you know, <laughs> so you know where you are, or like maybe that's just annoying. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean that. Um, I mean that is his name, the count, right? He's gonna hold you accountable. That's true. Woo! All right, man. Here we go. Shot number five. Woo! Here we go. Here we go. One, two, three, three four, five. five. Cheers. <laughs> Holding ourselves accountable. That's right. Goodness gracious. That is just horrible. I mean, it comes in a plastic bottle. I hate that. I hate that. Yeah, that was not fun. I hate that for you and I hate that for me. What's so clear about it other than the plastic mm -hmm. bottle it comes in? Oh, I guess the liquid itself is pretty clear. I'm clear on one thing. No more. That's not that's not fair. That's not good for you. No. This is my third and final question for you. Okay. So you've had a long and illustrious career that many would be very envious of. What has been the one most defining moment in your musical career and why? Mm. How did it change you? Hmm. Okay. I think the one moment uh, that I can re that I always think about is when we um, were flown out to LA to do a showcase with Capitol Records at the time, Capitol Records, um, and the president of Capitol was there. The head of A&R, the um, Coldplay's A&R team was there. Um, we had been flown out there. We also like uh, met with Interscope. We had met with Sony, like that Sony had flown out a couple weeks before. Um, that moment though, we played played for them in the pri like a private showcase, and it went great. It, it was uh, it went so well that uh, the president Andy Slater he came up on stage. He's like, "You guys have got it. Like you've got it." Um, we will be in touch, but I mean, this looks really good. Um, and a couple of weeks later, we're kind of waiting to hear more information. And we got word from someone at Capitol that there was a record contract for a multi album deal with Black Tie Dynasty. And this person, it was like pretty high up, like in Capitol. And they were like, Andy Slater, the president was in France, but the con, they saw the contract. For us they mm -hmm. saw it like they were 
they witnessed it and from what they could gather whenever we came back from france they were going to offer us this deal we probably would have toured with coldplay who, who knows wow. it was going to be pretty big um during that time um Capitol records be, was no more became no more atlantic really? records bought them up oh, and they wow. brought in all their own people and like got rid of every like there's this big massive changeover but uh, i say all that to say you know obviously it was crushing at the time because oh, then like yeah. that was like everything was about to change <sighs> wow. but um it's it's okay like i i think about that because it was a like a, a pivotal moment with the band um and i think about it in terms of like when that started to happen there was this sort of like um pressure uh to like we got to follow this up and you know this is a big record deal like this everything's about to change we're about to quit our jobs like all these things are about to happen and uh and it didn't you know and so but there was a period of several weeks maybe to a month where i was like i was already living in that space wow. you know i was already like accepting like that's what that's what's gonna happen did you did you get a check and buy a lamborghini <laughs> luckily no um and luckily we didn't sign the contract too by the way yeah i don't want to say that like that was like gonna solve everything sure. because if that had happened and then they were bought up then they would have owned our rights to our, you know, our probably our masters and our name and all of that. So luckily it didn't happen. So um, people ask me sometimes, like, is that, was that something that like you really regretted? And no, like I don't, but to come full circle, you know, like the, the band kind of, you know, ran its course. And I think part of the reason that we initially broke up was there was like a tremendous amount of pressure and the fun started to be kind of sucked out. Sure. of everything um and so that's when you know we took we took a break and you know i moved to new york and like came back and um and you know now we're you know back together and uh, unfortunately we're not with our dr our drummer eddie um steady you know, eddie steady eddie um but um it it has made me even appreciate that like being with the band and just making music with with my friends you know like it's made that uh mean so much more than like any like okay we had to make a career out of it we have to make a career out of it now or <laughs> yeah. whatever like it's just yeah it's fun to build on it of course you it's always so fun. right but it is yeah but we just narrowly escaped like being you know signed up to beholden. something yeah beholden to the behemoth and i may have never done music <laughs> the again soul crushers <laughs> the soul crushers so yeah. yeah so totally i think that's um uh, that was a very pivotal moment so i think about that a lot um, and anymore I talk about, it, I have to say like, no, it's not, it's not a bad thing. Like that's yeah. fine. Um, because it really like, it turned out the way it was supposed to. Got one last one. Let's do it. And by the way, we've christened it the Iron Fist. Cause it's red and it's gnarly. It's mm. got this Widowmaker hot sauce in it, Deep Eddie's <clears throat> Vodka and Bloody Revolution original. Well, let's uh, let's do this. All right, man. Cheers, man. The last Come one on, of the of the first episode of Shot Ones, man. This is let's a historic moment. No, man, we should cheers twice. Yeah, yeah let's, let's cheers Come twice. Come on, man. Iron fisted, man. All right. Ooh. Iron fisted. Here we go. <clears throat> Not bad. Not bad. It burns less than the Everclear. <laughs> yeah, it does. Actually. You know? So, my question for you is, are there, in the world, are there more doors or windows? I would say windows. There's more windows. Okay. And the reason I say that is because not only is every house equipped with more windows than doors, um... But I feel like your cell phone is a window. It's not a door. Hmm. It's not a portal. It is allowing you a glimpse into someone else's life, which is, I mean, if you, I mean, like, that sounds a little creepy. But We're going like metaphorical a with the windows. Yeah, I'm going, well. I'm going metaphorical. All of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a glimpse into someone else's life. It's not, you're not allowed to go into their life, which is what a door would allow you to do. Um, but the phone has become kind of an escape it's become the new reality so yeah i think it is a portable window it's in everyone's pocket um so yeah there's also doors to our hearts though i mean we've all got those as well yeah it's fun to think about when you think about yeah 
And I guess all the cars out there, I'm thinking there's a lot of doors there, but they also have windows. Yeah. With the every door windows with the car. Door. Although, would you count the hood of the car as a door? <sighs> that's a good question. I guess that's that's something so that you would have to go to the positive, We'd have to go to the experts for that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like because it's on a hinge, I would count that as a door. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all right, Corey. Dude. We made it to the end. Wow. An accomplishment on a school night, as you said. That's right. Well, this is the time. This is your moment. This camera. This camera. This camera. We're totally selling the Hot Ones thing right now. Okay. Tell the world what you've got going on. Here's what we've got going on. For all of you guys that need something to do on New Year's Eve, that you want to bring in the new year, you've got to join Black Tie, Phantom Mellow, Fit, and Dome Dwellers at Tulips in Fort Worth. Uh, come on out. It's going to be a great time. Uh, there's going to be a lot of surprises, a lot of pyrotechnics, cannons, explosions. Um, we might even do six crazy ass shots like we did today. Um, but uh, it's all going to be for the good of the greater good um, for humanity. So we're here to party with you. Please come party with us. We'll see you on New Year's Eve at Tulips. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the very first episode of Shot Once, and we are...